regardless of what level people are operating it's so important that you understand what your purpose is within the organization and when i say your purpose i'm not talking about your your job so if you recall when i introduced myself um i introduced myself as a business partner second i actually talked about what i do um, so i think that's i feel that i personally feel that that's really really important because when you understand what your purpose is within the organization then you understand how you contribute to the overall mission how we respond to feedback um, from job applicants so people who have actually taken the, the time and um, made the effort to actually go through a recurrent exercise to try and do their best and if they haven't you know had if they haven't been successful in the role how are we responding to those people who you know trying to make themselves better um, I think will very much define how we're seen, not just by our employees, but also by others who might have had a brief association with the organization. When people have really positive experiences through their association with an organization, then that actually um, improves their chances of actually being able to recruit really great talent to the organization because they look more attractive and they effectively become an employer of choice. And so, People come to work for them because they want to work for them, not because they've got, you know, they pay the highest salaries or something. People actually want to be there and they want to work for that organization. Equal weight to diversity and inclusion and belonging. Um, and this, this focus shouldn't always just be on recruiting a diverse workforce, but just thinking and making sure that they feel included and they feel like they belong when they come into that environment. I feel in my experience that there is so much um, so much emphasis that's placed on uh, diversity and maybe not so much on inclusion. A lot of companies might say, oh, they want to, you know, they want their workforce to be more diverse. But a lot of people out there who might be from uh, groups that are underrepresented within those organizations might be looking at their stats and, you know, looking at you know, people um, from underrepresented groups that are working in those organizations. And if they don't see the figures, then that actually makes them worry about what the culture will be like. Um, because if they don't feel like there are people in there that they can um, that they can relate to, um, then I guess for them, it's just, it makes them concerned um, about what they might be going into with focus on the diversity and I guess not so much on actually looking at what the culture is people are going to walk into. If people, you know, if they're able to then recruit in high numbers for one reason or another, um, but the culture is toxic, then what happens is that those people will probably end up leaving anyway. And so uh, when you look at the numbers of people that they're recruiting into the organisation, um, they might have a high number of diverse candidates, but then if you track those numbers, say, you know, in under a year or just up to a year, um, they might those figures, those numbers might not be the same. And then ultimately, that's become a more expensive. It's become a more expensive process, a more cost, costly uh, process for them because they have to run another recruitment exercise, um, and they have to run another recruitment exercise, have to go through that whole process again, training. Um, and then that's also putting pressure on the people who are left behind who are having to provide cover for those vacancies while they you know they're conducting all those different recruitment exercises as well and so the the, the inclusive uh, culture is so so important um, for them to get right there needs to be some really good practices that people can talk about since the pandemic and you know or seeing uh, different trends emerging in the workplace um, I think a lot of candidates have been really, really interested to hear what organisations have done um, in light of the, um, the global protests um, about racial equality, for instance, or how they looked after their, um, their people, their employees during the pandemic to move. And so those are some hard questions that um, candidates are really, really asking organizations because it gives them an insight into the culture within the organization and how they treat or how they value people. They need to have some good practices that they can actually talk about, you know, to people who are not part of that organization.